North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has held an open-hearted talk in Pyongyang with envoys for South Korean President Moon Jae-in, the North said. It's the first time South Korean officials have met with a young North Korean leader in person since he took power after his dictator father's death in late 2011, and the latest sign that the Koreas are trying to mend ties after a year of repeated North Korean weapons tests and threats of nuclear war. North Korea state media said on Monday that Kim expressed his desire to write a new history of national reunification during a dinner Monday night that Seoul said lasted about four hours. Given the robust history of bloodshed, threats and animosity on the Korean peninsula, there is considerable skepticism over whether the Korea's apparent warming relations will lead to lasting peace. North Korea, some believe, is trying to use improved ties with the South to weaken U.S.-led international sanctions and pressure, and to provide domestic propaganda fodder for Kim Jong-un. Officials from the South and North Korea's meet in, in Pyongyang, AP. But each new development also raises the possibility that the rivals can use the momentum from the good feelings created during North Korea's participation in the South's Pyeongchang Winter Olympics last month to ease the standoff over North Korea's nuclear ambitions and restart talks between Pyongyang and Washington. The North Korean reports ought to make Kim look statesmanlike, as they welcome the visiting South Koreans, with Kim offering views on activating the versatile dialogue, contact, cooperation and exchange. He was also said to have given important instruction to the relevant field to rapidly take practical steps for a summit with Moon, which the North proposed last month. Moon, a liberal who is keen to engage the North, likely wants to visit Pyongyang. But he must first broker better ties between the North and Washington, which is Seoul's top ally and its military protector. The role of a confident leader, welcoming visiting, and lower ranking, officials from the rival South is one Kim clearly relishes. Smiling for cameras, he posed with the South Koreans and presided over what was described as a co-patriotic and sincere atmosphere. Many in Seoul and Washington will want to know if, the rhetoric and smiling images notwithstanding, there's any possibility that Kim will negotiate over the North's breakneck pursuit of an arsenal of nuclear missiles that can viably target the U.S. mainland. The North has repeatedly and bluntly stated that it will not give up its nuclear bombs. It also hates the annual U.S.-South Korean War games that were postponed because of the Olympics but will likely happen later this spring. And to achieve its nuclear aims, the North probably has to resume the testing of missiles and bombs that has set the region on edge. Photos distributed by the North showed a beaming Kim dressed in a dark Mao-style suit and holding hands with Moon's national security director, Chung Yu Yong, the leader of the 10-member South Korean delegation. Chung's trip is the first known high-level visit by South Korean officials to the North in about a decade. The South Korean delegates plan to hold a follow-up meeting with North Korean officials on Tuesday before returning home. But it's unclear if Kim Jong-un will be there. Kim was said to have expressed at the dinner his firm will to vigorously advance the North-South relations and write a new history of national reunification by the concerted efforts of our nation to be proud of in the world. There is speculation that better inter-Korean ties could pave the way for Washington and Pyongyang to talk about the North's nuclear weapons. The United States, however, has made clear that it doesn't want empty talks and that all options, including military measures, are on the table. U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un Previous warming ties between the Koreas have come to nothing amid North Korea's repeated weapons tests and the North's claims that the annual U.S.-South Korean War Games are a rehearsal for an invasion. Before leaving for Pyongyang, Chung said he would relay Moon's hopes for North Korean nuclear disarmament and a permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula. Chung's delegation includes Intelligence Chief Su Hoon and Vice Unification Minister Chun A. Sung. The South Korean presidential Blue House said the high-profile delegation is meant to reciprocate the Olympic trip by Kim Jong-un's sister, Kim Yo-jong, who became the first member of the North's ruling family to come to South Korea since the end of the 1950-53 Korean War. Kim Yo-jong, who also attended Monday's dinner, and other senior North Korean officials met with Moon during the Olympics, conveyed Kim Jong-un's invitation to visit Pyongyang and express their willingness to hold talks with the United States. After the Pyongyang trip, Chung's delegation is scheduled to fly to the United States to brief officials about the outcome of the talks with North Korean officials. U.S. President Donald Trump has said talks with North Korea will happen only under the right conditions.
If Moon accepts Kim's invitation to visit Pyongyang it would be the third inter-Korean summit talk. The past two summits, one in 2000 and, the other in 2007, were held between Kim's late father, Kim Jong-il, and two liberal South Korean presidents. They resulted in a series of cooperative projects between the Koreas, that were scuttled during subsequent conservative administrations in the South. Copyright 9 Digital Proprietary Limited 2018